Welcome to the official YouTube channel for the Colin Coward Podcast. Go on, hit the subscribe button. There you go, right down there. If you wanna be among the first to hear my weekly takes, NFL, college football, more, right there. Let's talk Jets. I actually thought they did something I really liked. So Tyron Smith gives you about 14 games a year now, 13, 14 games, and oh. that's about it. But he's certainly got a year left in the tank. And when he does play last year, he just engulfs most ends. I watched a couple Cowboy games last year. He gets his hands on you. It's still over. It's like Aaron Donald. He gets his hands on you. you he gets you off balance. It's still over. But Tyron can't give you. He's not going to give you 17 games. He's not. He's going to give you 13. He may leave one early. But I thought it was really smart with the Jets because, first, um, there's it's a very good tackle draft. But generally, it feels like to me there are certain positions, corner, running back, that can come in and play immediately. If you if you can lock yeah. on a guy, I've seen a lot of corners walk into this league. Witherspoon, Seattle, he could play week one. You see running backs. It didn't take it didn't it doesn't take long for a running back hit the hole, get through. Uh, McCaffrey just walks in and can play. Adrian Peterson walks in, but we see this every year with mid round guys, mid round running backs. Uh, Isaiah Pacheco, seventh round, can play. Um, Tackle, tight end and tackle are two positions that in, in college, you know, Iowa makes their tight ends block. That's why Iowa has so many damn tight ends in the NFL. They force you. Utah forces their tight ends to block. That's when when Dalton Kincaid was coming out. I talked to Jude GMs and they're like, you know, a lot of these Pac-12 schools here, they're not asking guys to block. Utah, no, they're wide receivers. receivers. Utah makes their tight ends block. Well, so does Iowa. So tight ends, one of those positions that even the great ones, it takes a year to figure out, oh crap, I'm getting thrown around. But left tackle, there's just not many great, outside of the SEC, there's not many great edge rushers. I mean, Pac-12 this year had maybe one or two. And so I think Tyron Smith this year starts. And by Thanksgiving, the Jets still go draft the tackle with the first pick, the 10th pick. But with Aaron's injury, you, you can't start a rookie left tackle in the NFL. In that AFC it with Buffalo's pass rush. So I actually thought the Jets, this is one of those probably, you know, you're not going to make money on this deal, right? But considering the injury, Tyron, they're still going to draft the left tackle. I thought it was kind of a smart move by New York. They also traded for Morgan Moses, who I pulled up his NFL.com page. He's missed like two games in 10 years. So they get two tackles, a left tackle and a right tackle. That let's face it, I I do think there would be some pressure if you drafted the guy, and they've done this before with Beckton, and it failed immediately, and you get into a position where you're in trouble. I also think it allows them if they like another player a lot more early in the draft, they could take a tackle in the second yeah. or third round and ease him in. With I mean, Tyron is if he would have been healthy, I think we'd be talking about him right with like Trent Williams as one of the better players the last twenty years at the position. He just hurt a lot, but I think anytime. Let's face it, they're, they're in win-now mode too, right? I, th these guys will get fired no if this question. thing fails. And, and th they could do all the right personnel moves, and if Aaron's a shell of himself, they might be screwed no matter what. But you cannot – you just couldn't roll into the season with a shitty offensive line. He'd get killed. He, so he, would, not have, he would not have survived last year. I, I do think they are more equipped with these two tackles. And then you can also draft a tackle in the first two picks. You don't have to force it in the first round because what if – Roma Dunze is there or someone well, else to put with Garrett Wilson. Then all of a sudden, okay, now you got a running back, two wide receivers, Brock Bowers, you know, more of an offensive weapon. And you feel comfortable having two veteran tackles. And hopefully, you know, you can keep your interior offensive line. Yeah, I, I was looking at the first three rounds today. It is the best tackle draft I've ever seen. I, I've never seen a tech. Yeah. I, th I think you could get a guy in the second round. If you, if you love a wide receiver or a Bowers or yeah. another player, that you have is equal because there's going to yeah, be. Yeah. So Aaron there. comes in. So I, I thought it was a good move. Um, I just thought you, you can't go into the season. I mean, Aaron's, you know it. When, when, remember when Brady got hurt for about a year, he was pissy if you got near his knees. Like he just didn't, these old quarterbacks yeah. coming off injuries, they got, I mean, Aaron's going to be sitting there, you know, you, you, can, you can hear stuff. So I thought that's a smart move. I did think it's interesting with Aaron, though. You know, Aaron said something after the year. He says, we got to get this non football stuff. We got to get it out of the locker room. And I'm like, this week, two different stories, one by a CNN reporter that Aaron denied. The other one, the vice presidential nominee, RFK, puts Aaron's um, name out there. And I, my takeaway was, first of all, you are the company you keep. 
you know, if you're going on Joe Rogan, if you're, you know, if you're in discussions on podcasts or broadcasts with people who monetize headlines, that's not a knock on McAfee or Rogan. It's the business. Well, you're going to be yeah. a topic. You're going to get a headline. Um, but the other thing is, you know, with Aaron is that I kept thinking to myself, Green Bay is laughing their ass off. <laughs> they, Aaron goes, usually when the star quarterback goes, it's a turbulent year. I thought Green Bay by the end of the year was better than they were last year with Aaron. Jordan Love's got all these young kids. And my take on that presidential nominee thing is, you know, Green Bay sitting there thinking, we told you, like this, you're just going to get headlines. Not all negative, but I don't think you can have a non-football locker room with Aaron. I just think this is who he is. Yeah, I would separate the two. I thought the CNN report, I mean, a decade yeah. old hearsay. Like, I didn't, that's I didn't, that's an insane thing I didn't to report. Tweet it. I, like, if I was Aaron Rodgers, I'd be yeah. fucking pissed. Like half the people in the media tweeting, like, give me a no one knows. Like that that's I, that's yeah. extreme. The VP thing, it was like kind of believable because they're boys. That felt like Aaron, like, we're not doing quite enough. Remember when I took the pay cut? Like, guy, hey guys, I just rehab my ass off. And we feel a little bit like the Packers. Like, where are our moves? That's what that felt like. Because I heard someone say this, and they were right. The VP doesn't pay $50 million a year. He he ain't going to be the yeah. vice president. Rich people don't go into politics till they get yeah. older and bored. Aaron's still young and rich, and he ain't leaving the NFL. But that did feel a little bit Green Bay-ish, a little different tactic. But like, oh, my God, come on, Aaron. Th that would have been one if you respected your employer – you just would have just tweeted out like, this is the stupidest report ever, guys. I, I can't wait to see it OTAs. Because he did it about the Sandy Hook, which obviously is a much more powerful yeah. headline than being the VP. A lot of people making fun of him. But it's also like you do, like you're making a lot of, paid a lot of money. They've gone all in on you. They threw you a lifeline because you wanted out of Green Bay. And then what happened after that report? They, they've made some moves. <laughs> it, it, it did feel a little bit, I, I, I couldn't do the, you know, the source gymnastics, the reporter thing. I, I don't know, but well, it did feel he did, like he might've had a little something he behind did it that with one. The Jeopardy. Remember he flirted in the yeah. off season with Jeopardy. We, we don't think he wanted to do Jeopardy. That, that's not what he wanted to do. But I think to your point, it is. Does, Je does Jeopardy pay 50 million? I, I don't think well, it does. I think it pays it's well, probably but not 50. 10, not 50. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's Sam Darnold. Yeah. Essentially. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it it's, I look at the free agency as a whole, and one of the things I've always liked about the NFL is that it's always sort of evolving. And usually there's a team that just goes all in, and they win, quote, hash marks, they win free agency. And those teams have been burned so bad. I mean, Belichick spent a fortune two years ago. Didn't They didn't, they didn't get anything out of it. Receivers that could 90% of those players he Matthew hated Judon was like the only one, Hunter Henry a little. But I really thought it was a smart free agency. I thought of most of the good team. I mean, like, you know, just take the Rams, which because I watch everything they do. And I'm like, they paid for a guard. Reason being, they took their guard from TCU. They'll move him to center. So now they're Stafford, older quarterback. Niners, their big rival, great pass rush. They basically solidified the middle of the O-line. Matt can step up and move, but older quarterbacks don't like that interior pressure. And then they went and got a corner and then Garoppolo, and they did just a lot of B guys, what Houston did last year. I do feel free agency, there was a time when, when GMs loved to win it, but a lot of these young GMs, I think they're very thoughtful. I think they're aggressive but thoughtfully aggressive. I didn't think anybody, I didn't see a single move. Maybe you did that. I thought, holy shit, that's a, now I did think Gabe Davis to the Jags. Eh, I, it was a little rich. I think it was like 33 million, 39. I thought that was a little rich in my opinion. I think they had to have a contingency plan if Calvin Ridley had left and he got a that little expensive. That was the only, even know? Kirk Cousins. I'm like, time out. Kirk's value in that division is substantial. If you put Kirk in the yeah. AFC West with Harbaugh, Herbert, Andy, Mahomes, I'm not paying that money. But that money almost guarantees at least a wild card or a division title. I didn't see a move I hated. Gabe Davis, Little Rich, Kirk Cousins, I'd like a little smaller number. Everything else felt right to me.
And, and let's face it, I, I think the reflection, too, of this free agency is the money that's coming to the NFL, the salary cap going up. Unless you sign these enormous quarterback contracts, Russell Wilson, Deshaun Watson, most of these, the Houston Texans, let's say Daniil Hunter just shatters his leg. They gave him two years, $50 million. It doesn't hinder you for years to come. Once you give those enormous, even Kirk Cousins, if he's bad, it'll hurt you initially, but it, it won't sink your franchise. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think the Titans, Calvin Ridley, Tony Paul, let's see what Will Levis has. Let's see what he's got, right? So we know, and we'll pivot off him. I, I do think the Texans, they are pretty well run operation right now. And I, I think what, you know, he traded up last year for Will, uh, yeah. Will Anderson. Remember, cause they took CJ Stroud and they traded up. Well, he immediately gets more draft capital making this, this trade with Minnesota. Now he's got several second round picks where a lot of GMs will tell you, Obviously, if you hit on an Aaron right, Donald right. or a great player in the first round, it's but half the first rounders don't work and you pay That's them first right. round money. The second round is the place where you find elite yep. players all the time. I mean, half the league's pro bowl or second round and you pay them nothing. Those second round picks are very, very valuable to NFL general managers, especially the picks like 35 to 50, kind of that range, because you're finding the Debo Samuels, like high end players. For a four-year contract at about $5 million. It's easily the best deal in the league, non-like rookie quarterback contract. So, yeah, I I think you have a lot of younger GMs. I mean, the day and age of some of these kind of curmudgeon guys that came up in the 70s and 80s are long gone. Most of these GMs, I would imagine the average age of a GM is late 40s, early 50s, and there are several GMs in their mid to, to late 40s. So I, I think they just view the game differently, especially economically. They, they're not is beholden to we can't pay for this we can't pay for this if the starting guard 16 million that's what we're gonna pay 16 million now once you get that guy he has to be a good player once you pay a premium to me for a guard or a linebacker that guy then has to be a high-end player and if he is you're fine if he's average then you're kind of wasting money um so i didn't see a clear winner in this although i do think the bears getting keenan allen the winner was caleb williams uh between dj moore caleb williams dj moore keenan allen Gerald Everett, Cole Komet, and capable running backs. I'm like, and a, and a good solid left tackle. I'm like, that's that's pretty good. As you as you mentioned earlier, Caleb Williams had a good weekend. <laughs> that's a pretty good team offensively. Big 